Okay, so thank you very much for getting in us, for inviting me. It's great to be back in Vilnius again. I've been at one of these previous Humboldt colleges, enjoyed it a lot, and now I enjoy this one. All right, so I will be talking about a very fundamental issue. I'll be talking about statistical properties of the ideal and also of the weakly interacting Bose gas, means condensate, of course, Bose Einstein condensate. And this is the, su uh, the subject which, in some sense, could have been started already by, by Einstein in the 20s, but has been noticed as an interesting problem about 20 years later by Schrodinger. Schrodinger observed that higher moments of the, of the distribution of occupation of the condensate are actually uh, non-trivial and they are not universal in the sense of a choice of the statistical ensemble being used. Actually, I've st I have started working on the subject uh, more than 25 years ago, and part of that work was done in connection with my, with my stays in, in Germany with my Humboldt Award. So that comes back to the main theme of this conference. Uh, as I mentioned, Already a long time ago, I, I, I began some work on the, on the subject. And this work uh, was done with a lot of colleagues, a lot of young, mostly young students. Uh, some names are highlighted by a slightly different color. The number one co-worker on that problem was Marius Gaida, who is sitting here. But then there's the second column of the names. Krzysiek Pawłowski, a senior person already, and young students. The last one, Piotr Kulik, is here. He's still an undergraduate student and is working with me right now. The reason why we returned to the old problem is the fact that our colleague Jan Alt in Aarhus, in Denmark, finally, after many, many years, about four years ago, managed for the first time to observe and measure, with some accuracy, measure fluctuations of the BEC. That has actually triggered all the interest of, of, of me and my, my colleagues, my, my co-workers, <coughs> over the last, say, four or five years. <coughs> OK, so uh, when you think of just depletion of a condensate with a with temperature growing from zero to critical one, <coughs> then nothing interesting or nothing surprising, of course, comes out. The well-known formula with this celebrated Riemann zeta functions is known to all the students these days. Uh, one can think maybe about a little bit of a complication if, if the number of atoms is finite, then, of course, there cannot be a uh, a non-analytic phase transition, there's always a smooth uh, curve, and it's, of course, a little bit shifted like this red one. I'm talking here about ideal gas of 1,000 atoms in the spherically harmonic, uh, uh, spherically symmetric harmonic trap. However, if you go one step further, if you look at the variance, then this surprising complication pops up, something that, as I said, was first observed by uh, Scheringer. Namely, depending on the choice of the statistical ensemble, one gets different results. The variance is absolutely stupid for the grand canonical ensemble. So if you would allow your, your sample to interact with a lot of other atoms outside, then, of course, there could be a, a justification for using grand canonical ensemble, but in the lab, these days, you know, they have well-separated, well-controlled number of atoms in some volume. And of course, uh, in some sense, no wonder that Grand Canonical Ensemble does not apply. It is slightly more uh, 
surprising that also canonical and microcanonical ensemble give ensembles give different results. And this is still a subject of active research, in particular toward the end of the talk I'm going to give today, I will I will mention what we can do for weekly interacting systems. These, these results are for the ideal gas. All right, so what is really to be done? Still, we stay with the ideal gas. We can always think of energy scales such that the ground state of single particle in the trap has exactly zero energy. And then the probability distribution of the number of excited atoms, atoms which are outside of the condensate, is given by the ratio of two partition microcanonical partition functions. Uh, the one in the denominator is just the full thing. But the one in numerator is rather interesting. It's the number of ways that the total energy which we have in our disposal is shared by exactly n x excited atoms. So this, this way, the statistical distribution is really, comp is, uh, as always in statistical physics, is simply a combinatorial problem, but combinatorial problem which is not easy at all. Uh, analogously, in the canonical ensemble, these are partition functions uh, of the full system and also excited subsystem uh, arranged the same way as, as above. All right. Now, there are many nice results for the ideal gas that I will not derive or even hardly mention. Most of the results are actually obtained for canonical ensemble, not for the microcanonical one, because as we, all the students know, microcanonical is a lot harder always, yes? The best way of computing these things is to use recurrence relations, and those recurrence relations at the level of canonical uh, distribution, they allow for really very macroscopic calculations for even up to one million atoms. It is not so for the microcanonical, for which my student, Bisheki Jacek, found the best, as far as I can tell, the best recurrence relation. That, one, that relation for microcanonical is so complex that nobody has done it for more than 1,000 atoms, which is really microscopic little, little droplet of atoms. Well, OK, so if I take canonical and and do calculations for some reasonable 10,000 atoms, ideal gas still for most of the, of the talk. Then the for spherically symmetric harmonic trap, that's the distribution. It rises here uh, with a third power of, of temperature. It drops very rapidly, very close to the critical temperature. We have several curves here because all the other curves are for aspect ratio greater than one. In other words, for elongated traps, the more elongated trap it is, the more on the, to the right we have the curve. Why we are looking at this, in some sense, distorted traps? Well, because these guys in Aarhus, they do not have spherical trap, they have ellipsoidal trap with an aspect ratio which not in the first experiments, but now can be now varied between, say, 3 and 10 or something like this. 3 and 10 being aspect ratio, being ratios of frequencies uh, transverse to longitudinal. All right. Now, these results are obtained with the with the uh, recurrence relations, recurrence relations that we learned from the paper of, of Christoph Weiss and Martin Wilkens. Uh, but they are not enough. F in particular, from these results, we don't know how to obtain, uh, say, microcanonical results. So over the years, 
We, well, first of all, the results that I've shown a moment ago are actually the subject of this first measurement of, of Jan Alt, as I mentioned. And this is the paper that we wrote together, uh, actually claiming that this noisy experimental points are reasonably well represented by the canonical distribution, which is drawn here in red. Uh, but that is not the end of the story. Uh, the end of the story, or the next stage, was really a discussion of the microcanonical uh, results for the experimental setup of Jan. And to have access to these results, we developed what is the main subject of this talk today, this Fox state sampling method for looking at the statistics. So instead of, say, working with the uh, recurrence relations, instead of trying to compute partition functions, we are trying to, uh, to construct a set of the copies of the system in the phase space that are representing the desired, in the, in the first stage, canonical ensemble. To this end, we are going to construct the application of the well-known metropolis approach to such a statistical ensemble. For that, first we have to specify a set of states over which the system can jump from one to another. And those states are Fox states, are just telling us how many atoms are in particular orbitals of the empty trap. Of course, this is subject to the conservation of a number of atoms, that's obvious. And then we want to construct a representation in this space, which is distributed according, of course, to the canonical distribution. So that's our aim. How do we achieve this? Well, we have to specify the metropolis dynamics, dynamics in quotation marks, of course. The way uh, the system travels from copy to copy uh, to, to construct this cloud representing the ensemble. OK, so we have to specify probability of one atom jumping from one of the states to another state. That requires two probabilities. First probability is the probability which determines from which mode the atom is jumping out. And that is very egalitarian. Every atom has the same chance. Well, if so, then this probability must be proportional to the occupation, present occupation of this particular state. That's, that's what is indicated what, in, in what I have written. Now I have to also specify the probability of ending up in some other mode, in some other orbital. And this probability is given by a formula which resembles something that everyone knows, namely resemble uh, the relation between stimulated and, and spontaneous processes. First of all, there is this, prob uh, there is this uh, term with the actual occupation, Bose enhancement or stimulated process tells you that arriving there where there is a lot of atoms is a lot more probable than arriving somewhere that there are almost no atoms. There is, however, one more thing, namely plus one, just because there must be, of course, a chance for spontaneous, so to say, transition, namely transition to the empty uh, orbital, right? So this is really the, the prescription. This prescription satisfies what is essential for the metropolis. And, uh, all the principles of, of detailed balance and other mathematical requirements. We have to also specify the, uh, the uh, condition that is telling us whether we go, we, we do the jump or not do the jump. That is done in the standard way, just as everyone knows, one is P 
picking the random number between zero and one and checking what are the energies. If the energy is lower, of course, we jump. If the energy is just a bit higher, we could also jump depending on the, uh, on the value of R. Okay, so if I apply my method now to this problem that has already been solved, namely this 10,000 atoms in a harmonic trap of various shapes, then these little stars here are the results of my, my sampling method. As you see, they are excellent. Actually, all the curves can be reproduced very easily with the help of our algorithm. And you could ask, why hell I bother you with, with a new method if I'm getting the results that have been obtained before? Well, the reason is that I can go one step further. What I can look for every set of the copies at given temperature for the distribution, for the probability distribution or histogram of energies and for various temperatures. These are these almost Gaussian uh, distributions. And this way, I can approach microcanonical ensemble in a very clever and simple way by discarding, throwing away results which are outside of the shrinking interval. In other words, I can pick only the energies of very tiny interval and this way I will get a representation of the, of the microcanonical ensemble. This way I can look at the variance as it is decreasing while I am shrinking this interval of allowed energies. And by simply drawing this picture, I can deduce what are the microcanonical results for various shapes of a trap and for 10,000 atoms. This way, one gets results, as I say, microcanonical results for the samples which are much larger, in this case 10 times larger, than whatever can be obtained uh, by the exact uh, recurrence relations. All right, so these are uh, those microcanonical results, but plotted in a funny way, just because of a contact to this Aarhus experiment. What is really of great interest is the, is the uh, relation between microcanonical and canonical, one divided by the other, which we call the S parameter. So S parameter is telling us how much is the maximal fluctuation reduced if you go from canonical to microcanonical. Our results from FSS are here. And this last point, which is for 100,000 atoms, is certainly the world record uh, of the calculations for microcanonical ensemble. All right, so with this, we, were publi we published another paper with our colleagues from Aarhus. Namely, they looked back at their results, actually slightly improved uh, accuracy because of the progress in the experiment. And what they found out was that the blue curve, which is the best fit to their data, lies more than 20% below of the canonical result. So with the results that I've shown a moment ago, we decided to convince the first referees and now hopefully the readers of our paper that this observation is the very first observation of microcanonical um, fluctuations of the very weakly interacting Bose gas. I say we convinced, but we are ourselves not completely convinced. Why? Because our numerical results show that for the true ideal gas and true microcanonical uh, ensemble, this S factor or the reduction of fluctuations should be larger than 25 or so percent. So that is open question, which is still open because the role of weak interactions is still not completely clear. I will come 
at the end of the talk, I will come to it again. But before doing so, let me tell you a little bit about checking how, the, how our method performs for weakly interacting gas. However, until almost now, until last week, I would say, we only, only had interacting results for the weakly interacting repulsive Bose gas for particular geometry, namely for the boxes with periodic boundary condition. And those of you who work with the cold gas, they know why is it so. It is because in this and only in this particular case, if you turn on a little bit of repulsion in the gas, the wave function of the condensate is not affected. It is still a constant. In the harmonic trap, it gets broadened. Therefore, it is no longer, uh, it, does no, it, it is no longer included in the typical base on which the Metropolis algorithm has been explained here. So, to look at the role of interactions, weak interactions, and to compare it to something, we had to go to the say, box with a periodic boundary condition, or one-dimensional thing also with periodic boundary condition. And we have one reasonably solid corner where the results can be obtained. That's the Bogolubov approximation, which is, of course, valid first for the relatively large number of atoms, second for weak interaction, but third for very low temperatures. OK. So here it is, a, a comparison for Bose atoms living on a ring on the, uh, or, or, uh, or on an on a interval, but with the periodic boundary conditions. In the upper left, we have results for non-interacting gas, canonical and microcanonical, uh, compared to this little pink thing, which is the Bogolubov approximation. As you see, Bogolubov approximation agrees as it, as it should at very low temperatures, and then, of course, goes through the roof because, well, because it does not work for, the, for higher temperatures where there, is a, where there is considerable depletion of the condensate, right? Uh, but here, it's more important, maybe. It's a situation with weak interaction. The, Weak interactions in Bogolubov approximation uh, were studied for the first time in the paper by Georgini Pitaevsky and, and Stringari. Uh, uh, yes, uh, already a long time ago. And what they noticed was that the interaction, this blue thing, is actually redu uh, reducing the fluctuations, of course, where at low temperatures, where Bogolubov approximation works. Many authors took it for granted that also maximal fluctuations should be also reduced by interaction. We say not necessarily so, because you, as you see, these blue diamonds go above the non-interacting case. So, so, so judging from what is at low temperature, what is at the maximum is a tricky business. It is somehow uh, displayed here in the inset, which shows that while the value of the variance at low temperature could decreases with the interaction, its maximum increases. So one should be cautious. Now, the next thing that we looked at relatively recently was a historically very important question. It's a question of the shift of the critical temperature with interactions. Probably some of you might know, might remember, that that has been a subject of incredibly con incredible controversy. People were obtaining completely different results, claiming, of course, that they are correct. And then there was another paper, and then the result was yet different. I really like a very short PRL by Kelson Huang, published about 30 years ago, where he said, 
giving the table of results of, the, of his predecessors, he said, okay, and this particular guys, they got the same result as mine, except for the sign. Now we know that Huang's result is also no good <laughs> from that paper, yes. Okay, we can of course apply our method, but before doing so, uh, Krzysztof Pawłowski compiled the results from various uh, papers for which already the functional dependence on two control parameters, coupling constant and the density, was already correctly established. And all the discussion was only about this C, this coefficient C. As you see, it can also vary a lot, very a lot from, from theoretical paper to theoretical paper. Again, there is one, <laughs> one bad guy who got, uh, who got the wrong sign, and that's our good friend Martin Wilkins. He got negative shift. All right. So uh, we, of course, we can go and do these things our way, but we, but but since the calculation of ours and also of many predecessors are done for the finite system, then there is always a question of what is the critical temperature. Of course, there is no non-analyticity in the results. Long time ago, how many minutes? Zero? Okay. Give me two minutes, OK? Uh, so long time ago with Ijasek, we just n uh, noticed that in, uh, for finite systems, it's better to look at the position of the maximal temperature of maximal fluctuations rather than trying to, 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 to invent some way of, 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 of uh, defining the critical temperature. So of course, we applied our method to this shift. And these are the, uh, some nice pictures where we see the shift of the critical temperature for, for the cube, for three-dimensional box. And this is a, a full thing for, from 10 to 10,000 atoms for the ideal gas. And then in the main plot, there are these things which are representing, going up, that are representing the shifts for the interacting gas and of course, from this we could of, uh, we could get the uh, the ratio of shift of the temperature, and it comes with the right uh, with the, of course with the right uh, variables, but with yet slightly different coefficient. All right, there is a two D case that has also been studied and one can look at the results at the poster that Piotr Kulik is going to present tomorrow. Now, the last thing. As we all know, or almost all know, maybe with some exceptions, <laughs> the gas in the harmonic trap, when it starts interacting and, 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 and there is a repulsion, that, that broadens, right? So for such a gas, including interaction, and not changing our method certainly should not work. So the program that we are going through now is to shift to another base for which one of the basic vectors would be the true, correct uh, gross pitaeski solution of the, for the interacting gas. And then in this new base, set the Fock state sampling method. And that's what has as I said, I got the very first result last week from Maciej Kruk, and this is for only 100 atoms in 1D harmonic trap. The solid line is the non-interacting exact result. The orange guys are obtained in an improper way, namely are obtained uh, including interaction but keeping the non-interacting base, and if I change the basis vectors to the correct ones, then I get this blue result. As you see, it makes a difference. It has been exaggerated for this very tentative picture because interaction is relatively strong here. Nevertheless, as you see, we are now in the process of getting, for the first time, 
to the solid result for weakly interacting gas uh, uh, on the, the uh, impact on, 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 on the statistics. Uh, to summarize, we have a, a robust method of calculating fluctuations, both of ideal and also hopefully non, uh, weakly interacting Bose gas. Fantastic, I would say, boost to this research has been done because experiments are now available. There are not completely solved questions and the questions of the role of weak collisions here. And the question that is related to our interaction with our colleagues from Aarhus, namely, if they see some enhancement over microcanonical, is it due to interactions or is it due to the fact that they have acceptance uh, window for the energies, which is not zero. There is some, so, so the, in, the, in my coordination uh, results for variance, they are not at the very end. They are not at exactly microcanonical. Thank you very much.